So, Josh, you've been practicing a lot, which is good because you suck. <laughs> um, what, uh, yeah. what sort of stuff have you been exploring uh, in your playing? Are you uh, coming up with new ideas on the fretboard or something? <laughs> something like that, yeah. This sounds like an interview question that was set up. Um, uh, it's, this is not a setup. <laughs> I don't know that I've been like strictly sitting down and practicing, but like in my recording process mm. of like recording solos and stuff like that, I've been um, intentionally sitting down and writing these solos in a way that helps me with solos in general. I don't, that was a very vague way to say that but what I'm doing <laughs> I guess is I'm as guitar players you know we learn our patterns and we kind of just play the same shit over and over at least that's what I did <laughs> and um, I got very tired of playing the same stuff over and over so when we were writing our portrait stuff and like when I was doing some of the stuff with, um, with Matt Garska I when I was writing the solos I decided I wanted to play them differently than I normally do avoid patterns that I normally do and find new pathways mm -hmm. in the solos or like ways to navigate the fretboard. I'm all, I'm a big pattern guy. So like, you know, if I'm thinking about going through like a, I don't know, a Dorian or something like I'm, my natural instinct is to do like, some kind of pattern, which that's just like groups of five that sure. I think we both are pretty comfortable with. Um, I wanted to avoid that <laughs> because it's, I've done it so much and like, it's kind of, it's easy to hear at this point, which is something I was trying to avoid. So I decided to like, Normally, okay, so normally how I write a guitar solo is I just improvise over and over until I play something that I like. Yeah. Which is cool, but then, I don't know if you have this issue, it just makes me play the same stuff over and over. There, I think th there's a time for that. I feel like sometimes I'm okay with leaning into what people expect out of me, but definitely when I'm writing songs mm. with the portrait stuff, I definitely pushed myself uh, with new ideas like you're describing. Um, but sometimes I think... I think my improvisation is who I am and that's what I need to do. Like, I think like when I've like collaborated with people, I'm okay with that. But, but it's, it's, it's a different perspective, you know? Also, it's a timing, it's a time consideration. Like if I have to do a job, like I'm going to, I'm going to do what I'm, what I already am ready to do, you know? But that's not creating new pathways, which is what we're talking about. But, it, but on that note, like, yeah, like it, it, it comes and goes. Um, I do think that myself, this sort of uh, pathway creation thing, I am, um, I'm trying to do it so that it comes out in my improvisations. And I think yes. unavoidably, like what you're doing also will come out in your improvisations. But I think like I'm doing it more in the practice room rather than in the solo writing uh, headspace. I think, I think when I'm writing solos, like I will, I will sort of play around with ideas and I'm just like, oh, actually this is pretty cool. And then I will flesh it out in the solo situation, but I don't think I'm coming up always with like completely, completely, completely new things that I've never done before then. Um, but the creating pathway, pathway stuff is super sick because um, to sort of get back on track, guitar is, is too constrained by technique. So depending on where you land, if you know, if I do this, like I only have so many ways that I can go, right? I'm probably gonna either keep going and hit something with my pinky or hit something with my middle finger. Yes. You know, like, what am I, how, I, there's no options, you know, like, I, I have no agency. <laughs> so, finding different ways of navigating different types of harmony based on what your hand physically looks like is, like, an interesting sort of puzzle and challenge that sometimes gets very far from guitar-isms and, and, like, typical guitar language. Yeah. Um, but I feel like that's sort of what keeps me entertained with all the legato and all the patterns and all the different stuff i like the description of it being like a puzzle because it, it almost is it feels like that when i'm when i'm doing this stuff like it, it depends on exactly what i'm trying to do with the part but what i was doing a lot with the portraits thing specifically like the drip solo was i was trying to fit all these patterns within accents 
right? So like, there's like, say you have like this five, four, three, four accent, right? So now I'm trying to find these legato patterns that fit in five, four, three, four groupings. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a puzzle in the way that like, I, I literally sat, I'm, I still, I've still been doing this. So like, I'll sit down and be like, okay, I need an interesting way to play a group of five, right? So maybe I'll go like, say I'm in it's an A minor. So I'll be like, um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's my five, but it's, it's not a pattern I would normally just improvise, mm -hmm. but it's still something that I'm comfortable playing. Cause I'm thinking about how is this possible to play fast? you absolutely have to consider that the goal is to play it fast. So you have to like consider your technique while creating these pathways. Right. And like you were saying before, like the technique informs this. So I'm like, if I'm say I do this first part where it's a hammer on then pull off, all my fingers are here. Where do it? Where can I put them? There's, I can't put them behind the string, yeah. so I can only put them in front. So that informs what my next note is going to be. And then at this point, my right hand is also informing this and that I'm doing like a down, down hybrid pick mm -hmm. pattern. So I'm like, and I'm going to hybrid pick the next note. Now, because my pinky hit this note, all my fingers are behind my pinky. So I, now I have to choose a note that's behind my pinky. <laughs> It's uh, it it all sucks, bro. It's it's very it's very difficult. Like, <laughs> like I yeah, like you're showing me this, and I'm thinking I have a similar I have a similar thing that I thought that I that I came up with recently, and I thought it was really dumb, because for me, like I feel like I've I've sort of spent some time trying to bring back control into these challenges that you're like describing, right? So to do specific things yeah. with specific fingers in order to to then. Ex contract and expand my hand in either direction so like here's one here's one it sounds cool but you're gonna see that it looks stupid right so like I'm right so oh right you're like doing this like bunching up thing so you can go back down yeah because because when I did it originally I was doing this And it was just like suboptimal, <laughs> but it's true. Like, and um, so this sort of crunching up, um, coupled with this dumb fucking thing that I do, where I'll play a fourth with my ring and pinky, kind of just um, mm -hmm. optimizes for for like just the articulations that I like, where I'm like picking, where my notes are sort of coming out properly. But it, it's it's sort yes. of it's all it's all really dumb and, and um i don't know i feel like for me like like the, the the sort of pathway creation like goal is to have like different ways of of leading two different notes and and, and those yes. different ways are sort of guided by where in the bar i'm trying to go and where i want to resolve around the beat which where like some chromaticisms kind of come in if i want to add a note or take away a note uh, but it's it's all just it's all just like weird thing because you'll see someone play something relatively simple, but it's interesting because of how they sort of voiced around it, how they sort of led around it. That's kind of the, the phrase is, itself is is kind of interesting, whereas the end point and the starting point are simple. Yeah, like because getting from like here to here is like such a simple thing, but it's how you get from there to there that can make it interesting you know because then you can also do like the string like where you're skipping strings and <laughs> um, but it's for me what it took though is for me to slow way down mm -hmm. and like actually be like okay does this make sense to play and does it sound good? And does it follow the chords? Because also what I was doing was that like, um, say the chords are changing, like keys or something, or it's going from like major to minor. Yep. Like I can break it down to be like, okay, I'm going to go from major like, 
and then it goes to minor. Um, and I, I sat down, I slowed it down, I figured out where in the beat it's changing chords, and then played that. Yeah, and, and this, practicing over that chord change would, would make you uh, come up with an, uh, it's a, a set of pathways in itself, right? The sort of, uh, the pathways aren't just uh, navigating like a static harmony. It's also navigating like um, harmony movement, right? A lot of my pathways are specifically practiced with like a resolution in the, in the beat in mind, right? Like when I'm practicing like pathways in uh, like over five chords. <laughs> The whole point is that I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end. I'm not practicing altered in a modal way, although it's cool. It's a cool thing to do as well. But it's it's it, when I'm doing it like right or. Do you practice it in a way where you can switch to that one at any time, or is it? Do you have to start in the same place in the beat every time? No, no, no. Um, I think I'll practice it in time slow enough and then i will just like be really free with it with where i start and where i end but i'm trying to make the resolution happen in the right place mm -hmm. right so if i'm it, it, but i also can do it like i I'm, I'm training my ear to make the decision for me so i'm not always doing it with the backing track i'll do it to a click and then i'm like you know yeah or something like or Or I don't know, like this, this is not really happening. Right? Or if I give myself <laughs> more time, I could do. Uh. Right. And, and, and this kind of leads into something I think we should mention is that when you are practicing this stuff at this tempo, right like the way that I'm doing, I have the sort of uh, mental capacity to actually think about all the notes that I'm playing and sort of make decisions on the fly about which direction I'm going. So this is at this tempo, at this really slow, controlled speed where I think true improvisation is happening for both of us. And because we are, you know, we're exploring these pathways and building these different ways of navigating X harmony, once we've sort of reinforced these ways of navigating harmony we can then bring those back at higher more stressful tempos yes. right and so the creativity of, of of exploring pathways is interesting at really slow speed because all of a sudden all my vocabulary is sort of possible right if i explore if i explore like a dorian right like there's stuff that i can do that i don't really do at high speed but potentially that i could right yeah it's like all those really like wide interval like almost like um tongue twister yeah. type of I'm doing I'm doing licks. wide intervals just for the sake of demonstrating of stuff that I don't really do but it doesn't have to be right Right so if I did that twice as fast I definitely would have done something more muscle memory based but so if I decided that I yeah. liked this and I spent enough time with it, I would sort of build up that uh, freedom and control more and more, right? There's kind of like a sweet spot, like there's a tempo where I can control everything and then, and then there's a tempo where I can control everything if I'm really concentrated. And so moving this spot higher and higher is the goal. And then above that is, is where I have to rely on muscle memory. I think I have like a 50 to 60 success rate when I'm like improvising something really fast and I have to make like a modal borrowed change. That's like where I'm at right now. Not ideal, but I'm kind of, I'm working on it. I'm not a perfect man, you know, like I, <laughs> and give, call me bad. Let's talk about it in 10 years and then uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be ripping through these changes, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full real improvising, no muscle memory, just. <laughs> no muscle memory. <laughs> that, that'd be a crazy catch line. Like, I don't use muscle memory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so dumb. Um, that's but yeah, Pythos is cool. It also kind of leads into like the chromaticism stuff, which I think relates to what you were saying about um, the groupings. It is something that I'll add in there. Like if I don't have enough notes to fit that grouping, I'll usually start adding chromatic 
things or if i'm feeling spicy then i'll uh i'll just do it within the grouping you know like the group of five or like say i want to make this group of five group of seven instead of just going like you can be like one two three four five six seven i feel like i don't use it as much in my normal playing as you do but um i definitely use it in if i'm trying to like <coughs> fill in a certain amount of notes or uh there's just like a section where i feel like it fits over the chord because it is a very specific sound absolutely i i um i really dig it the chromatic stuff it's also kind of a way to bring a lot more tension back in if you were to like make it more chromatic and depending on what you target um, like this we're kind of getting a little bit away but if there's this line i've been playing where i i chromatically approach the the tritone in a minor idea like and then i'm like so that's kind of spicy but it's the, the chromaticism is, is what sort of legitimizes the idea of me drawing attention to the tritone Thanks for watching this uh, episode of Trading Licks. Um, if you don't know, we are splitting these videos between our two channels, between Joseph and my channel. So if you haven't seen uh, the other um, section of this video, then you can head over to Joseph's channel and check it out. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching.